Hi, and welcome to the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for joining me for worship. You know, today Jesus says in the gospel, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. So I decided it's time to go on a road trip. So let's buckle up. Get our sunglasses on, grab a cold drink, fire up the engine, and come with me and let's see what Jesus has in store for us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now turn to the lessons appointed for today. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4, 15 to 18. Your love, O Lord, forever I will sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout they walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor, our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. The 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Since the second Sunday after Pentecost, we have been dwelling in the tenth chapter of Matthew's Gospel. The stories have been about Jesus preparing his disciples and us to become fellow laborers with him. If you recall, he told us that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And like passing the mantle, he has entrusted and commissioned us with healing the sick and with proclaiming his message that the kingdom of heaven is near. In last week's session, Jesus warned us about some of the dangers we are likely to encounter along the way, and he persisted in telling us, do not be afraid. All throughout this chapter, Jesus has been offering words of guidance and warning and promise about our mission. And now, today, on the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, we come to the conclusion of the chapter. As we are sent off on a road trip into the mission fields, into the world, into our places of business and neighborhoods and communities, Jesus teaches us about the nature of welcome. Now, if we aren't careful, we might gloss over and miss what Jesus is actually saying here. We might think that Jesus is telling us to welcome the stranger as we would welcome him. Or as if our takeaway from today's lesson would be something like, Jesus wants me to welcome more people. Or, Jesus wants me to show better hospitality to the people I meet. Now don't get me wrong, welcoming others and showing hospitality are great and important things. But if we listen carefully to Jesus' words, it is not about extending welcome. It is about receiving welcome. It is about what it means and what it feels like and what it is like for us to follow Jesus, to accept welcome in his name. Now, this is what he said. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. We are the ones receiving the welcome. And when we are welcomed, Jesus is welcomed. Let me put it in another perspective. The way you relate to another person or to a group of people. The way people see you, how they hear the things you say or experience the things you do, is how they see, hear, and experience Jesus in you. Let that just sink in for a moment and think about that. This chapter is part of an even broader commandment to follow Jesus out into the world. For example, the conclusion of Matthew's Gospel is often what we call the Great Commission, to go, as the Bible says, and make disciples of all nations, sharing the good news of the Gospel. 
And Jesus gives us his promise now and then to be with us to the very end of the age. This means that part of our work, part of our responsibility, is getting out into the marketplace. It means getting out there, forming real and lasting relationships with our neighborhoods and our communities in such a way as to love and save and bless and reconcile the world around us. Not all will welcome you or me, of course, but some will. And for those who do, Jesus says that we are his very presence among them. What would happen if we took this seriously or lived as if this were true? How would your behaviors and attitudes change if you really took to heart that other people see Jesus every time they look at you? What would happen if we operate on the assumption that Jesus is visible in and through us at every moment, in every interaction, in every relationship, in every encounter, in every conversation, and in every conflict? What sense of responsibility would you feel in your home, or in your marriage, or in your workplace? Would you speak less and listen more often? Would you choose your words with greater care? Or maybe examine your motives more closely? Maybe you would reassess and reevaluate where you need forgiveness and to whom you need to offer forgiveness. Today's gospel tells us to go and speak and heal and carry God's image out into the world, and to do so with reverence and gentleness and humility, truthfulness and love. And as we do this, Jesus is giving us his own reputation, his own character. We carry Jesus' own standings into the world. As we follow him, we carry this awesome responsibility of making present the very reign of God in our midst. Can you even imagine that? Let us go forth in the great name of Jesus. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 3 Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we, we all, all may, may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer, our bishop, for Mauricio and the Diocese of Brasilia, for St. George's, West Terre Haute, Mr. Chuck Stafford, Senior Warden, and for the Church of North India. That, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of, of your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there, there may be justice, justice and, and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That and our, our words, words may find favor, favor in, in your sight. sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble especially for those on our prayer list, for Stephanie, Stephanie Phyllis, Phyllis, Terry, Terry Steve, Steve, Dave, Dave Eric, Eric, Ashley, Brian, Dan, Dan Jerry, Jerry, Susan, John, Steve, and Scott. 
that they may be delivered, delivered from, from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your, your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now together, let us pray the act of reception. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection for their means of grace, and for the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament and in all of your creation. And since I cannot receive at this time Holy Communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I may come to your good, glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. And now we boldly proclaim, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in the right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. 
I know that under normal circumstances, we gather at the altar rail around our beautiful altar to receive Holy Communion. In this COVID pandemic, we have gathered in other ways to receive spiritual communion. We've gathered around art, around gardens and the beauty of God's creation. And today, God calls us not only to retreat and to sit into the quiet, but to be out in the mess, in the busyness, in the act of life, and to go and bring his image, to be the image of God out in the world. And so today for spiritual communion, I bid your prayers and supplications and invite you to meditate on this busy and active world. May we find God not only in the sacred spaces of places like our church and other holy places, but also out in the beauty of God's creation in the marketplace as well. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining me today on this road trip. I hope it was an experience of God's creation, God's altar, the body and blood of our Lord in a totally new and different way. This week, may you go forth as you are called in the gospel to be the image of God to one another. Let us go forth now in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us. I wish you a most holy and blessed week ahead.